because of her dedication, her passion, and knowledge of whatever she was doing, being a marine engineer, and, uh, and working in a power plant, not in a marine, she was of much, much help uh, to the company. And uh, all that we can say is Boris Anna to the family, to the friends, uh, my colleagues, and everyone who, who knows uh, Masi. And we can say, rest easy, Masi, till we meet again. Thank you. Thank you so much. Uh, I would like to, to call the next person, Mr. Senkomo, to come speak on behalf of the Kericho Fraternity. You were to have an auntie and an uncle, but I think you can come and speak on behalf of the Kericho Fraternity. Then after that, I'll ask the family to you know, be nearby. You'll take the next slot. Usana. Uh, good afternoon to you. Uh, good morning. Good morning. Yeah, uh, as you have been told, um, Gerald Senkomo uh, from Kericho. Uh, I would like to say that uh, the Gadares have been like, a, uh, we are actually like brothers. We, our children grew up together. Masi was born as we were seeing like this. She grew up to be a girl of demeanor as we were seeing her. So it's really very sad that uh, I have to come here to say bye. It is very painful, but as it is, we cannot uh, say much. We cannot question God. God knows the best. So my uh, message to the family is that uh, let, let's trust in God. Uh, there is a reason why God did it. We may not ask him, but let's trust him that he will do. Uh, he will comfort you and he will comfort us. But it is really sad to miss a girl like Mercy. As you have been told, she grew up upright. She was uh, the best in her class in primary, even in secondary, and in the university. So really, it is a sad moment to, to, to see her go, but uh, we have to accept. So I came with my wife. Uh, she's there, maybe she can stand, from Kericho, she's there. And uh, our children are here, maybe they can also stand. There is Mujisha, there is Victor, they are somewhere here, uh, he's there. Victor is somewhere there. So actually, I've also been given condolences from Kericho, especially from the B's family and the others. They were not able to come, but they uh, asked me to pass their condolences to, to you. And uh, they may not have come, but they are with you and in prayers. So please receive them. And on my behalf and on my family, Paul Esana, I know that void that uh, Mercy has left, God will fill it. Don't feel that uh, you have been left. God will fill that void. And uh, as we go along, I know that uh, it, has been, it has not been very easy to you, even to us. But then, God will fill it. May you be blessed and may you have strength. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you, thank you so much for those comforting ones. And uh, at this point, I would like to invite the family, the very immediate family, mom, dad, and Dan, Mugambi, and Mark, and Dori. Kindly, just, it is your time to also give, I would like to call you all, all at the same time, please, if it's, it's okay. So karibuni sana.
let the comfort of the Lord, you know, reign in your hearts. And uh, yeah, so we can. Hello again. I will read the tribute from uh, on behalf of the siblings. A beloved sister, a friend, a confidant, and a role model. Mercy was uh, different things to each of us. At the end of the day, we all regarded her as our safe space. Throughout our lives, we have been. Uh, she has been present in all the moments we deemed important to us. She was a gentle soul, yet firm in our defense as her family, always making sure we found a way together and uh, to get what we need. Mercy, we couldn't know that uh, that morning uh, God was going to call your name. The day God called you home, it broke our hearts to lose you. And uh, you did not go alone. A part of us uh, went with you. In life, we loved you dearly. In death, we will do the same. You left us with beautiful memories. Your love is still our guide. And uh, though we cannot see you, you are always at our side. We shall forever remember you as a happy, giving, uh, fun-loving, and a fighter for all the things you believed in. Our family chain is broken and nothing seems uh, the same. But as God uh, calls us one by one, the chain will link again. Thank you so much. This is my tribute to my sister. Dear sister, I thought to myself what words would honor you. What arrangement or statements could possibly capture your intoxicating essence? Could hope to convey our love and admiration? And I could barely put together a sentence. But today I'll try. They say it's better to have loved and lost that never, than never loved at all. Mercy, we have loved and lost you. And I wouldn't trade the 20 years I have had with you and the 29 years that we have had with you for anything. Not even for the absence of this pain we now are in. I believe in life after this life for any other way, life itself would be meaningless and without logic. Therefore, it is my hope and belief that we will see each other again. I cannot believe that this is the end. I believe there will be another page in our story. I hope and I trust that big sis, we will hold each other again. This is my prayer, this is my gratitude, this is my comfort. May it be so. Amen. Amen. Was a, was a beautiful angel. And as she did in life, she's just gone ahead of us on a trip that we were supposed to go on together to take care of our interests after this life, just as she did when she was alive. 
I don't believe we've lost her. If anything, we had the best thing and had the biggest blessing by having her in our lives. And legends never die. So she lives on in all of us. And as I've been told really recently, a general is always a general. Even retired ones. Um, Father Tomasi, you are most welcome. Uh, you are lovely people. I, I know that you love Tomasi. We loved her more. I think also God loved her the more. And that's why he decided to take her home. My tribute to Massey is that uh, Massey was a lovely daughter. She loved everybody. She cared, cared for everybody. I'm sure she put her life behind uh, to love people more. That's why she has a network from primary to the place of work, currently where she was working. And we want to thank God for giving her that heart, big heart. I, I remember a few, a month or so before Mercy went to be with the Lord, she actually bought everybody in the family a present. Very expensive. And she threw a party for friends during her birthday. That was June. We were just asking and saying, okay, Mercy has done this and it's good for us as a family, we were happy. But we didn't know that uh, God had prepared her and God's plans are different from us. So Mercy loved us as parents, Mercy loved her as siblings, Mercy loved the relatives, and all, all that we can we know is that Mercy loved everybody. Um, as parents and family, it, it's a big loss to us, and also friends and wherever and the place he was working. But we thank God that uh, with those few remarks, no one can express what we have for mercy, our feelings, but God knows and mercy knows that we loved her. She will continually be in my heart as a dad. We are not going to miss her and we trust someday God will unite us as a family and may good Lord left us in turn of his. Praise the Lord Church. Um, my name is Isabella. I'm going to read on behalf of Mama. She has asked me to do so. She said she will speak tomorrow, not today. Tribute from Mom. Mercy, my beloved daughter. 
words cannot describe my pain of losing you. One moment I was talking and laughing with you, and the next you are gone. You are not only my daughter, but you had grown to become my friend and confidant. You had a very kind heart and do not want to see anyone suffer. We could share a lot of things and occasionally argue, and you would tell me, I wish I had that kind of faith. I will forever miss you. Your beautiful smile, your kindness, love and support. Rest in peace at Jesus' feet, my angel, until we meet again. Um, allow me to say something about Mercy. Mercy was like a daughter to me. I've seen, we lived together with the family in Kiricho. We were neighbors all through. So I've watched these children grow, all of them, the entire family, very close friends in the same fellowship, in the same church. And in the church, I was the head of Sunday school. So these children were in Sunday school. I taught mercy. Sunday school, I led her to Christ in Sunday school. And when we shifted to Nairobi, we shifted together. And our friendship continued. I have attended every graduation of this family. The mother is my best friend, very close to me. So this family, we've been together through and through. I was the one who was mentoring Mercy. Even the week that she went to be with the Lord, she had called me and told me that she wanted to meet me the next week, which is the week that she passed on. We were to discuss something. I think she wanted me to discuss about her wanting to further studies because she would seek a lot of wisdom. And I will say the only confidence I have as I stand here today is that Mercy was born again and she was a child of God. Uh, the Bible says train up a child in the way he should go and when he is grown he shall not depart from it. Sometimes as teenagers we may see our children as if they are not very spiritual but their names are written in the book of life and that is what matters. Um, I say to the family, the gap that has been left by our beautiful angel, it is only the Lord who can fill that gap. Friends, it is only the Lord who can fill that gap. Otherwise, no one can replace mercy. Um, the family has also asked me to appreciate all the people who have made it to come today to give them warmth and give them love and give them support to also appreciate the church that has made it possible for us to gather in this place to give that warmth and support again. There has been overwhelming support from everywhere, especially the Kericho family. There have been so many phone calls a lot of financial support. Many have come physically, and I believe there are so many people from Kericho here. The workmates, the friends, the schoolmates, everybody. We have seen, let me say, excess love. And that is what makes the burden. Because see easy, that is what has made it a bit easy when we see and when we experience the love. So may the Lord bless you so, so much for every effort, even the committee that has convened to make this possible, there is a reward in heaven for each and every one of you. What I will ask is that you continue praying for the family. They covert your prayers so much. And also, after everything is over, kindly don't just disappear. If you can make it to come physically and see the family, come see them because that is usually the most lonely time and also a phone call if you are not able to come. May the Lord bless you so much. Amen. 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 Let's give them a round of applause. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. 
Samuels. Um, may the Lord give you comfort. I also stand here as uh, their friend, and um, we in Sitam Church we have small groups. We call them Safari groups. That those are the Bible study groups. So I belong to uh, the the group, the Safari group, where masses that are members. So we are also here just in solidarity with them and just to comfort with them. And I know all of us, if we are given a chance, we will all have something to say about mercy and just to, because she has touched us in one way or the other. And because we do not have a lot of time, and as we have been appreciated, to secure to to me patiwa shukurani zetu, kwamba our presence here is valued, is very valuable and priceless. So. Um, I would like just to bring to a close that session of the tributes and the, just say that we know mercy has touched all of us in one way or the other and that you are all appreciated. So at this point in time, we, I know you've been sitting for some time. I would like us to just stand up. We will do a hymn. I will invite on stage uh, Brother Joe to come and lead us in a, in a, in a hymn. After this, uh, you not get from to hear from me. You will just go straight to the word of God. The pastor will take over and just guide us through the rest of the program. So, karibu sana, Jo. Amen. Amen. Let's rise to our feet a bit. There's a friend in Jesus. Amen. What a friend we have in Jesus. All our sins and grief to bear. Thank you, thank you, because God, you are a friend that sticks closer than a brother, O oh God. We bless you because, Father, you are our refuge, our strength, and our ever-present help in every hour of need, O oh God. And as we stand before you, this is the confidence we have in you, Lord Jesus, 
the lord you are the same yesterday today and forever and the lord you change not oh god seasons times change lord but you are faithful and therefore father i want to pray for that assurance in our hearts that 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 peace that comfort in our hearts that lord it is well because you are still in control oh god we bless and we honor you in jesus name we pray amen amen i'll kindly ask us to have our seats even as we share the word of god briefly and then we'll be praying for the family allow me to just introduce myself again my name is pastor isaac uh, from Sitam Rongai. Uh, nevertheless, we are the same family, but this is my home church. This is where I grew up. So um, let me say I'm at home. I'm at home. And again, I want to appreciate each and every one of you who stood with the family. Again, Poleni Sana, Mama and Baba Beatrice, Poleni Sana, Mark, uh, Dorcas, and also Emmanuel, Poleni Sana. We want to continue praying that God will give you comfort and also peace. And one of the things that happens in life is that if as human beings we had a way of evading death, if as human beings we had a way of escaping death, I'm sure we'll do what, whatever it, it will take for us to avoid it. But again, allow me to submit to us this morning that death is a reality. It's a reality to each and every one of us. In other words, none of us, none of us. As a matter of fact, the Bible says it is appointed. Death is an appointment for each and every one of us. It's an appointment. That one day, one day, you and I will have to die. But again, the Bible says, after death, then comes judgment. So it is appointed for a man to die thereafter judgment. But again, we want to thank God for mercy who made a decision to live for Christ. And as most of us have shared and you know, given tributes on how she impacted our lives, and I'm sure there are many would have wanted to be here, but because of one thing or the other or reason, they are not here with us. But I'm so grateful that Mercy made a decision to live for Christ. And so as I speak this morning, I also have, a, have that confidence that Mercy rests in the arms of Jesus Christ. He, she is in the best place. The best place that if any of us probably would ask her to come back, I'm sure she would not even want to do so. She's in a place where there's no sickness, there's no death, there's no crying. And I'm sure that's a place that all of us would desire to be. But again, allow me to say also for the parents, one of the hardest things is when you're burying your child. And sometimes as parents probably wish you'd be the one. But again, also, God in his own wisdom does his things. And not because he hates us, not because he's a sadist, but because he loves us. God's love is unshakable. God's, for love, God's love for us is not based on what we experience as human beings. God's love is not, is not based on the material blessings that we receive or we don't receive. But God's love supersedes all these, all these things. And so, again, my prayer is that the Lord will give the family comfort. A few months ago, um, my wife and I received a call from my father-in-law that my mom had in, been involved in an accident. And for a moment, my dad-in-law never wanted to tell my wife what had, con what had conspired. And so he gives me a call and he tells me, I want to talk to you. And from the other end, I listened to his voice and I knew things are not good. And so I remember him saying, Isaac, I don't, want to t I don't know what to tell you. And for a moment, I went blank. I felt a sense of helplessness. I felt like, you know what? Um, I wish this death had occurred in a different way, you know? I wish it was a sickness. But you know, it is something that happens so suddenly, so abrupt. And to make matters worse, where the accident happened was very far. And at some point, I sat back and asked myself, even if, you know, even if I was to probably even rush there, I would not make things any better. And so I felt a sense of helplessness, you know, where I could not do anything. And again, it was so difficult for me to break the news to my, my wife and also her brother. So I was left for some time just to think, how do I break the news to these two? Because I knew what would happen. And 
by God's grace, I gathered courage and just, you know, shared with her and also with the brother. And, you know, the other thing is that I had to be strong for them. I had to be strong for them because um, I knew if, if I also, you know, go down, we'd all go down together. But one of the things I really want to appreciate God this morning is that he has given me grace day after day. He has given us grace as a family each and every day, taking one day at a time as we experience his healing. And so today I want to share briefly, just before we pray for the family, on courage to face storms. Courage to face storms. And as a family, I'm sure you are in a storm. Most of us seated here, probably in, you are in a storm. It, con it could probably not be death as per se, but sickness, joblessness, financial crisis, whatever storm it is. And one of the interesting things that we find in the scriptures, just before we read the, the scripture this morning, is Jesus speaking to his disciples in the book of Mark chapter 16. Mark chapter 16, he speaks to his disciples and um, 1633, he speaks to them and tells them, in the world we live, in the world we live, we'll face many trials, tribulations. In other words, what Jesus was telling his friends, it's a guarantee. It's a guarantee that, you know what, being a Christian does not exempt you from sicknesses, from storms of life. Because these were his disciples, these were his friends. They, 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 they had lived with him. They had, you know, seen him through his up moment, lowest moments. And so Jesus tells them that, you know what, guys, in the world you live, and we are indeed in the world, that we are going to face many trials, tribulations, storms will come our way. It's a guarantee. And storms come in different ways. Physical death, joblessness, you know, financial crisis, name it. These are storms of life. And they come to each and every, they cut across. Whether you're a Christian or not, you're not exempted. But Jesus tells them, but be of good cheer because I have already overcome. So we have Jesus who's walked all through this journey of life. And he says that he has overcome. He has overcome all these things, even death. The Bible says that Jesus holds the keys of life and death. Jesus died. And the Bible says on the third day he rose again. So when Jesus says that he has overcome all these things, it is not something that is talking about theoretically, but it's practically when you look at the life of Jesus, Jesus went through all these things and he tells his disciples that be of good cheer that I have overcome the world. But again, as I talk about the storms this morning, the different ways we respond to these things, different ways we respond to the storms, especially for us as human beings. And one of the things probably we'll find ourselves doing is asking Jesus, where were you when this was happening? Where were you when mercy was involved in this accident? Where were you, Jesus? Couldn't you do something about it? And we see this in the life of you know, Lazarus, family, Martha, when Jesus is called to go and, you know, be of rescue to the family. The Bible says Jesus took some time before he got there. And the first thing when Martha sees Jesus, he tells him, you know what, Jesus, if you had been here, this would not have, been, this would not have happened. In other words, she's trying to ask Jesus, where were you? I mean, we call out on you. We send a word out there. But if you had been here, this would not have happened to, to, a, to, a, to, to your friend and to our brother, Lazarus. But there's another category that when storms hit them, the first thing they ask is, Jesus, don't you care? Don't you care that this is happening? Don't you care that I'm in pain? Don't you care that I have these storms right left and center in other words you're from one trouble to another and this happens when the disciples were crossing over and the storms hit the boat and the bible records how jesus you know was asleep and one of the things that one of them says jesus don't you care that we are perishing don't you care don't you care that we are in a storm don't you care that this and this is happening and so there are different ways that we respond to these storms based on how close we are to God, based on our relationship with God. And so there are those who will ask, where were you, Jesus, when this storm was coming? I mean, if you, re if you really claim to be who you are, 
If you claim to know everything, where were you when this was happening? Couldn't you have prevented it? There are some who will say, by the way, God, don't you care? I mean, you say you love us, but God, where were you? And so I want to refer to the book of Isaiah. Isaiah 43, verse 1 to 5, as I speak to the family this morning, and I speak to all of us, including myself, on the courage to face storms. Courage to face storms, and not storms, the storms, not a storm, storms. And allow me to read Isaiah 43, verse 1 to 5. This is God speaking to his people. And as I read this scripture, I want the family, Baba and Mama Beatrice, to put in your word. I want Dorcas, Emmanuel, and Mark, just put your word. And, you know, this is what God is saying to you this morning, even as we go to a time of prayer. God speaking, he says, but now, this is what the Lord says, he who created you. You can put in your name Jacob, you can put in your name Mark, Dorcas. This is what God is saying to you. He who formed you, Israel. Do not fear, for I have redeemed you. I have summoned you by name. You are mine. Verse 2. When you pass through the waters, I will be with you. When you pass through the rivers, they will not sweep you. They will not sweep over you. When you walk through the fire, you will not be burned. The flames will not set you ablaze. Verse 3. For the Lord your God, the Holy One of Israel, your Savior, I give Egypt for your ransom. Cush and Seba or Sheba in your, in your stead. Verse 4, since you are precious and honored in my sight, and because I love you, I will give people in exchange for you, nations in exchange for your life. Verse 5, do not be afraid, for I am with you. I will bring your children from the, end, from the east and gather you from the west courage to face storms. Allow me just to share with us four things. I will not go into explaining so much about the scripture, about the, about the, 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 the scripture that we've just read, but allow me to share four things, four things with us together with the family that I believe will help you to go through this storm and even storms to come. And as we look at this scripture, the first thing that we realize from the few verses we have read in verse 1 is that we need to know who we are. That is the first thing that will help us to go through the storm or go through storms of life. God begins by saying that he knows us. He knows us by name. The most interesting thing that God knows each and every one of us seated here by name. And to make it more better, God says that he knows the number of your hair on your head. In other words, he knows this is hair number one, hair number two, and he never confuses. That is how much detail God is with our lives. But at the same time also, he poses a challenge to all of us, that for us to be able to go through storms of life, we must know whose we are. We must know who possesses us. We must know whom we belong to. We must know that, indeed, we belong to Christ. And as a matter of fact, this points us out to that aspect of having a personal relationship with God. At some point, Jesus posed the same question when he asked his disciples, whom do people say I am? And that question appeared to be very obvious. And Peter begins by quoting what other people say about Jesus. But at some point, Peter pauses and says, this is who you are. And Jesus says, you know what, that has not been revealed to you by flesh and blood, but by the Spirit of God. In other words, what I am saying this morning, that for us to be able to face each and every storm of life with courage, we must first and foremost understand whose we are. Whom do we belong to? Whom do we belong to? And so this morning, the first thing I want to submit to us is that we must know whose we are. But the other thing that also we see from this scripture in verse 2 is that God has assured us of his presence. This morning, I want to submit to us, the family, that one of the things that God is assuring you this morning is his presence. And his presence makes 
the difference in our lives. And at some point, Moses says, unless your presence goes with us, we will not leave this place. It is only the presence of God, my brothers and sisters, that makes the difference in our lives. And in Hebrew chapter, uh, rather, and, 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 and Hebrew chapter 13 and verse 5, this is the promise that God has given us this morning, that he will never leave us nor forsake us. But when things are going wrong, he departs from you. Jesus has assured us to be with us both in the good times and in the bad times. And I want to tell the family this morning that God is still with you. He's still with you. You can take that to account, that God is still with you. In this period of mourning, God is still with you. He has not left you. And my prayer this morning is that you'll experience the presence of God in this season, together with anyone who probably could be going through a storm in one way or the other. So the first thing that will help us to go through storms of life is that we must know whose we are. Secondly, we must also understand and appreciate God's presence in our lives. But thirdly, the other thing that will help us to go through storms of life with courage and also will help this family to go through this season is for us to appreciate God's consistent nature. Verse 3, God's consistent nature, where we know that God never changed. He's a faithful God. He's a faithful God. That which he has promised, that which he has said, he will fulfill it. He will fulfill it. And so God is faithful. As a matter of fact, the Bible reminds us that even when we are faithless, when we feel like quitting, when we feel like throwing in the towel, when we get to a point we, 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 we think that, you know what, we don't need God. In such situations, God says he is still faithful because that is his nature. That is his nature. He's consistent. He's consistent in what he does. He's consistent with what he says and what he does. You can never separate God from what he says and his word and his actions. So I want to assure you this morning as a family that God is still faithful. Not only is he with you, but he's faithful faithful to be able to accomplish what he has said about this family. I know there's a gap that has been left in the family, but I want to assure you that that does not deter God from fulfilling his promises and his purposes through this family. Amen? Because he is a faithful God, and he never changed like the shifting of the shadow. God is not this kind of a person who will tell you one thing, and then he does the other because he is consistent in his nature and he's faithful. And in Psalm 119, verse 90, David says, echoing the same words, where he says that God's faithfulness transcends generations. In other words, it's from one generation to the other. God's faithfulness is from one generation to the other. And so that is something we can take to bank this morning. But fourthly, the other thing that will help us and also help this family this morning to face this storm with courage is God's love. God's love, where God says, I love you. I love you. God's love for us. And in Romans chapter 8, verse 35, and verse 13, all through to verse 39, Paul poses a very interesting question where he says, what shall separate us from the love that God has for us? And sometimes we think death does separate us from the love God has for us. I'm here to submit to us, neither death, neither angels, nor demons will ever separate us from the love of God. As a matter of fact, for us who die in Christ, we actually say it's a promotion because it ushers you into the very presence of God. And so this morning, I want to submit to us that if you are to face the courage, with courage, the storms that come our way, we must take we must, we, must, we must stand on the love of God because it is the love of God that gives us that anchor to be able to stand firmly amidst the storms of life. And Paul again says, there is nothing, death cannot, death cannot separate me from the love that God has for me. Suffering cannot separate me from the love God has for me. Angels cannot separate me from the love God has for me. Neither the demons. That is how much God loves us. God loves us so much. To an extent, the Bible says that he gave his only begotten son, his only precious son. Secondly, we must appreciate God's presence in our lives. And then thirdly, we must also 
take God at his word because God is consistent in his nature. And then fourthly, we must anchor our lives in God's love. And so in conclusion, as we are seated here, God is the only person who genuinely we can count on. Friends come, friends go. Some friends even get tired of seeing us around because all they see when, or what they think, or when, you know, what they, they see when you are around them is burden. But we have one who loves us genuinely, and he will never change because that is his nature. He's someone that we can count on anytime. The Bible reminds us that Jesus is a friend that sticks closer than a brother. He's right here with us. He's right here with us as a family. He's right with us even in this very sanctuary because he's a friend that sticks closer than a friend even in the most difficult times. But again, the question we need to ask ourselves is because we need to have that personal relationship with God. We need to ask ourselves, does God knows you? And do you have a relationship with this Jesus? Do you have a relationship with this God? Can you stand and say that he is my God? Can you stand and boldly claim and say, you know what? He is my friend. He is the one that I can count on. He is my anchor. He is my all in all. Do you have that courage and that confidence? And you can boldly say that even if I was to die this morning, that I'm assured of spending eternity with him because I have a personal relationship with him or with him. And so I want us to pray this morning. I want us to pray this morning. As we bow down our heads and just close our eyes, I want us to reflect on our lives this morning. Mercy has run her race. Mercy has run her race and she has kept the faith. And this morning, I believe God has bestowed on her a crown. But for us who are left behind, as we close our eyes and as we think about our lives, I want to pose this question to you. Do you know this God? And you have a personal relationship with him. Do you have the courage this morning that even if death was to come knocking at your door, you can say, I will spend eternity with him because he knows me and I have a personal relationship with him. Are you here this morning and you're saying, you know what? I'm even afraid of death. I'm afraid of death. Yet death is not the finality. It's an appointment. It's an appointment that all of us have this morning. And the Bible says thereafter comes judgment. Comes judgment. And this morning you are saying, Pastor, pray with me. Pray with me that this morning I'll be able to see mercy again. I'll be able to see my Savior again and spend eternity with him. And so I want to give my life to him. I want to entrust my life to him so that I can be assured of his presence with me so that I can usher his presence in my life. The only way to do it is just to open your heart and say, what, Jesus, I want to give you my life. And I want to pray for such a person who's saying, Pastor, pray with me. I want to open up my heart this morning and usher the presence of God in my life that on that day, I'll be able to see mercy, I'll be able to see my God, and we'll rejoice again. If you're there this morning with every head bowed and every eye closed, you're saying, Pastor, pray with me. I want to have God's presence in my life so as to give me courage to face every storm of my life, including death itself. Would you show by lifting up your hand that I'll pray with you. I'll pray with you this morning. I'll pray with you. I'll pray with you this morning. Just by a show of hand, you are there, you're saying, Pastor, pray with me. I want to get saved. I want to usher God's presence in my life. I've been living far away from him, but this morning I am here. Just before I leave this service, I want to be assured of God's presence in my life so as to have courage to face every storm of my life. Is there such a person? Just shoot up your hand. I'll sit and pray with you. Just shoot up your hand. I'm looking around. Thank you for that hand. Put it down. Thank you so much. See hands going up. Thank you. 
could be here whether young or old Jesus is knocking at the door of your heart he wants to be part of your life he wants to be part of what he does his agenda any other person any other person I'm looking around for those who have lifted up their hands I want you to repeat this prayer after me say Lord Jesus I welcome you into my heart to be my savior and to be my Lord right now I confess with my mouth and believe with my heart that you died and rose again I thank you for your love and for your mercies write my name in the Lamb's book of life and right now I confess that I am a child of God and that I belong to him in Jesus name amen amen at this point I want to pray for their family so I'll ask them if they have the strength just to stand in front here Dorcas Manu and also Mark if you don't mind just you know standing uh, but if you're not able it's okay you can sit you can sit it's okay yeah so I want us to pray for this family this morning indeed it is not easy it is not easy but like I said God has assured us of his presence his love and his consistent nature and that he says you belong to him he is your responsibility and so he will take care of you he will take care of you David says that the Lord is my shepherd I shall not be want that even though you walk through the valley of shadow of death like you are in right now may his road and his staff comfort you and may he restore your souls for his namesake that is my prayer for you that the Lord will restore you the Lord will restore you even in this season so from wherever you are wanting to just say a prayer for this family just say a prayer this this morning speak up speak a word speak a word speak a word and just commit this family to the hands of God as we pray for them and as we pray for their journey to the to, to the Rakanithi. hallelujah father I want to thank you blessed be your holy name Jesus blessed be who say that you are the great shepherd the Lord Jehovah Rohi O God I want to thank you for this family thank you because God Almighty you knew that such a moment and such a season will come O oh God and I thank you because this did not catch you by surprise because you are the beginning and the end and that as Isaiah reminds that you know the end of the matter from the beginning O oh God and so I bless you because King of all glory you also have promised never to leave us nor forsake us O oh God that you are God both in the good times and in the bad times O oh God I thank you for this family I pray that Lord you will uphold them you will guide them you will lead them Jehovah and the Lord you will restore them O oh God restore them this morning O oh God restore their souls O oh God restore their souls this morning O oh God where they feel weary where they feel beaten down Lord I pray uplift them encourage them see them through this season O oh Jehovah for your glory and for your honor O oh Jehovah Father I want to thank you for mom and dad O oh Jesus I pray the Lord will uphold them I pray that, Lord, you speak those words of comfort, O Jehovah. Lord, strengthen them, O God, to be able to stand for these children, O Jehovah. Thank you so much for our mercy, O God. I pray specifically, specifically for him as the head of this family, O God. May you, Father, give him the courage. May you, Lord Jesus, give him the grace, O God, the wisdom, Lord, even in this season, to be able to guide his family through this season, O God. Thank you for the rest of the siblings, O God. Lord, I pray that, Lord, you will help them to stand together, Lord. I ask that, Father, you will assure them of your love, of your presence upon them, O God. That in all this, Lord, I pray that your hand shall be revealed, O God. And the Lord, you will draw them closer to you, O God. Above all, Lord, I pray may this family stand strong, O God, in your power and in your strength, O God. When they feel weak, O God, I pray that your strength, Lord, shall be manifested, O God for them to carry through through this season, oh God. I thank you for their journey to Tarakanith, oh God. I commit them into your hands and ask that, Lord, you go ahead of them, 
the Lord will protect them, preserve them, O Jehovah. We pray against premature deaths in this family. Lord, I pray that these children, Lord, will serve your purpose, O Jehovah. These children, King of all glory, will live their lives to the fullest in the mighty name of Jesus. And any other young person under my voice, Lord, I pray and declare this morning that as long as they are called by your name, Jesus, that they will live to serve your purpose, O Jehovah, even in their generation, King of all glory. And so, Father, I thank you and I bless you. In Jesus' name we pray. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. You can kindly have your seat. Amen, amen, amen. We want to thank God for this, Father, that he's been able to bring us. And at this point, we want to be a blessing to this family. Maybe some of us have not had that opportunity to be a blessing to them. Or maybe you have, you know, you have been a blessing, but this morning you're also saying that you want to be a blessing more. I know the family has encountered, uh, incurred uh, uh, probably some expenses, but this morning we want to be a blessing to them through our giving. And so we'll be collecting some offering, and whatever we collect, that goes towards the family. The church does not, uh, has nothing to do with that. And so we have the ushers on standby that are going to help us collect the offering. And as they do this, uh, Joe is around, will do us a hymn, and then we'll give thanks for the offering and then invite uh, Mugisha, who's going to give a vote of thanks on behalf of the family, and also give direction from here, and then later on we are going to make a procession, or rather, let me not say a procession, we're going to do a hymn, and for those who want to come and just say a word of Paula to the family, they'll be seated in front here, uh, of course, because of the season we are in, uh, you know, the social distancing, I will encourage us to do so, and also say a word or two to the family. So, um, we want to give the ashes that are coming your way. Joe will do us a song and then Nelson will pray for the offering and as it, as uh, once he has done that he will invite Mugisha. Amen. Karibu sana Joe. Maybe Joe. Praise the Lord. Th those of us who would like to do Mpesa, you can send to this number kindly and take note of it. It's 0714 3093733 the number again is 0714-309-373. So those who would like to do M-Pesa, you can send that number. Thank you. Thank you. Rock, rock of ages, cleft for me. Let me hide myself in me. Be of sin. 
It's the Mpesa number again, sorry. As we pray. It's 0714-309-373. The number again, 0714-309-373. Let us pray. We thank you, Lord, for the gift of life, and we thank you for the giving that we've received this morning, Lord Jesus. May you replenish and may you bless every giver, my Father. And above all, we pray that God Almighty may these gifts minister comfort, may they minister peace even to this family, my God. We bless you and we honor you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. So at this point in time, I will invite uh, Mr. Mugisha to come and give us the announcements and also a vote of thanks. Kindly. say I'll begin with uh, the announcement uh, we had organized uh, for viewing of the body uh, uh, the body is at uh, Chiromo not very, not very far from here and um, uh, we we tried making it a bit early but uh, they'll be us from 130 so those of us who uh, perhaps uh, in view of the distance uh, from uh, considering that we shall be de departing from Nairobi very early in the morning we may not have an opportunity to view the body again so uh, we're encouraging most of you guys if you are available you can make your way from church around 1 30 to Chiromo um, we have made arrangement uh, viewing will start at 1 30 um, the other thing is that uh, we also have uh, we are the committee. Uh, we are selling some handkerchiefs at a cost of only Kenya shillings, 100 pop. Uh, that will go a long way in supporting uh, whatever expenses that are being incurred. So any when you're exiting, there'll be ushers uh, or uh, some of the committee members at the exit doors. Uh, kindly uh, support uh, whatever you have. Uh, but minimum is Kenya shillings 100. Uh, the other uh, important announcement that I wish to bring to your attention is that we have organized transport uh, from Tarakanithi. Uh, with 5 a.m. sharp tomorrow morning, we shall start uh, driving to Tarakanithi. Okay? Those of us who will be able to manage to be uh, at Chiromo at 4.30, that's fine. For those of us who want to drive straight, that's also for links. The, what do you call it? Uh, yeah, the, the um, yeah, Google Map by maybe by evening uh, this evening, so that uh, for ease of uh, for ease of driving and of course uh, getting the route. Uh, we have uh, what I was saying is that we have organised transport uh, for guys. Uh, we have been registering. We have a person in charge. Where's Valentine? Valentine, uh, she's at the back, okay? Uh, kindly re register with her. Uh, I think I don't know where she will sit. Uh, maybe she can, after the church, she can sit somewhere so that if you, for whatever reasons, we have organized transport for most guys. Uh, I believe, um, how much, uh, Victor? I think we, uh, 1,500, to and fro. 1,500, Bob, to and fro. So kindly register with her. So and then uh, I think the bus will be at uh, Chiromo. Okay, at uh, exactly 4:30. For those of us uh, who uh, will have been uh, considered to be provided transport. Okay. Um, 
Otherwise, uh, I think uh, we uh, those uh, will mark uh, my end of uh, my announcement. I wish also to, as, as a vote of thanks, on behalf of the family, the Kadares, I, I first want to thank uh, the church, and also creating time and, uh, you know, uh, standing with the family at uh, this difficult time. And also please uh, uh, pass our regards to the the, the head pastor or the lead pastor at Sitam Valley Road for allowing us to use the sanctuary today, okay, uh, on behalf of the family. I also want to thank the committee. Uh, we have been having our de, de facto chairman, Victor. He's done a good job. Uh, all the committee members, wherever you are, please stand. Uh, yes. Kindly stand with all the committee members. Uh, on behalf of the Gadare family, uh, we really want to thank you guys. Uh, I think, guys, we have been having meet, meeting up to midnight. Okay? Uh, guys have, uh, um, have uh, you know, you, you, were you were able to sacrifice your time uh, to meet, arrange, and uh, on behalf of the family, I really want to appreciate everybody. The family cannot thank you enough. Uh, I believe our God in heaven will repay you the best or, or how he knows best. Otherwise, thank you so much. May God bless you and may God continue blessing you. I also want to thank friends or basically friends who are gathered here. We have those guys online. Basically, all the friends of the Gadares. We want to thank you in abundance. We cannot uh, quantify or we cannot basically say how grateful the family is. Sankale, they, they even some people who were able to travel with Masi all the way from Namanga to Nairobi at midnight. We, we want to thank those people, wherever they are. Some of them, we didn't, we didn't even know them. Because I remember that fateful day, we were at Chiromo at around 1 a.m. And, you know, we met people, people who escorted the body all there from Namanga to Chiromo. We want to remember those people and say thank you. May God bless you in abundance. The doctors from Nairobi Hospital, the doctors at Namanga, and anybody who played a part. We want to say thank you. May God bless you. We may not know you in person, we may not, the family may not come and uh, may not know you in, uh, in person, but our God in heaven will surely bless you. And uh, lastly, I want to thank God. The family thanks God. We give God all the glory back to him. Even our God is, we celebrate God during happiness, sad moment like this. We give God all the glory back to him because there's nothing we can do. We are just, uh, I like the way the doctor said is that everybody, uh, no, the pastor, sorry. <laughs> the doctor said that everybody has an appointment, okay? And even as we are waiting for our appointment with, with God. So we, we, just, we can only say thank you and we give all the glory back to God. Even us, as we wait for appointment, and we believe and we hope then that we shall also be able to meet mercy. Otherwise, with those few remarks, I just want to say thank you. Uh, may God bless you. Uh, let's all purpose, if whatever reasons, uh, uh, let's all purpose to try and make it to uh, Taraka Nithi and, and give our friend, our sister, uh, 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 a goodbye. Tarakanithi. Otherwise, with those uh, few remarks, thank you so much and may God bless you. Thank you. Amen. Thank you so much, Mugisha. I, I think with that, we've come to the end of our service. And so what we are going to do is just to stand and share the words of the grace. Again, the family uh, members are in front. Uh, so feel free just to come and uh, just say a word or two of encouragement as we exit. But in case you feel you want to exit, please uh, feel free to do so. So I'll kind of ask us to stand on our feet as we share the words of the grace together. Amen. I want to 
uh, invite our MC who's going to guide us and give us more directions even as we proceed on the service. Like I said, uh, Pauline is enough for the family. We pray that God will give you peace, comfort, and also strengthen you in grace and that he'll carry you through this season. Parable son of Nelson. Thank you. Thank you so much, our pastor. Uh, buenas tardes. So at this point, uh, I would like to uh, ask to proceed with the program and I would like to invite uh, the person who is going to do the eulogy, just kind of and Because we are going to have tributes from Jake Watt by Paul, then friends, we have Zebida, Daisy, Winnie, we shall also have cousins, that is Chebet, Chebs and Valentine, we shall also have aunties, that is, uh, and uncles, and then finally the family. So I would like to be calling us in maybe twos, so after the eology, let us have the Jake Watt and the friends kindly near this point so that we, we j just go back to back. So, Karibu, Karibu, yeah. Karibu sana Mugambi. Then as Mugambi makes his way here, we could have Paul from j uh, just at the sign there, kindly. Thank you. My name is Daniel. I am the sister to Masik. Oh, I'm the brother, sorry. <laughs> I will be taking you through the eulogy. Uh, we have uh, four parts. So, Masik was born on the 13th of June in 1992 at St. Leonard's uh, nursing home in Kericho. She was the first born daughter of our parents who are here today. Mr. Samuel Kadare and Mrs. Jennifer Kadare. She was a sister to me, Daniel, Emmanuel, Mark, and uh, Dorcas Kendi, who are in front here. Uh, and for her education, Marcy attended early primary education at Elland Academy between 1997 and 2001. She joined Kiricho Primary School in 2002, where she, uh, she proceeded on to complete a uh, KCPE in 2005. She emerged the top student in the school and qualified to join Loreto High School Limuru in 2006. She successfully sat for her KCSE exam in 2009 and later on joined Kenya, uh, Jomo Kenyatta University of Agriculture and Technology to pursue a bachelor's degree in marine engineering. While pursuing her degree program, she was selected to go for the onboard training at Korea Maritime and Ocean University in South Korea from March to November in the year 2015. After coming back from Korea and uh, completing her degree program, she briefly worked at Bandari College before joining Watsila East Africa Kipevo 3 power plant for six months, October 2016 to February 2017 as an intern. After that, uh, in March 2017, she was employed at Man Energy Solutions Kenya, uh, working at the Triumph Power Plant Kitengela in the Operations Department, where she rose to the ranks to become a, a shift engineer as a position of a supervisor, a position she held until her unfortunate demise. 
during her last days, uh, Masi concluded her shift on Saturday morning and uh, spent the day with her friends. On Sunday, she was joined by her siblings, Dorcas and Mark, who had paid her visit at her Kitengela home. Uh, on the Monday of 13 September, they decided to travel with uh, a friend uh, as well to uh, Namanga, a road trip that uh, she had been looking forward to. Unfortunately, they never reached their destination as they were involved in a tragic accident. And uh, she passed on at uh, Namanga Mission Hospital while uh, receiving emergency treatment. Uh, we are thankful that uh, all the other passengers are okay. Uh, they sustained only minor injuries. Uh, as her family, we loved Mercy so much, but God loved her more. And we accept God's will. May her soul rest in peace. Thank you so much. Thank you, thank you, Mogambi. May the Lord continue giving us grace. So, Paul, uh, from JQuat, kindly. And as Paul comes, I want to request Zebida, Daisy, and Winnie, please. You can come and just sit on this, on by by my side here, kindly. So that we we just have us coming on the stage after, right after Paul. So, Zebida, Daisy, and Winnie, kindly just mount the podium. Karibu sana, Paul. Um, good morning, Bwana Sifiwe. My name is uh, Paul Nyainda. Uh, I'm an engineer by profession. Um, you'll excuse me today, I'm a bit nervous because this is not um, an ordinary situation but to be very brief um, Masi the late Masi was our classmate we joined um, we were together in JQuat from 2010 up to 2014 2015 uh, we were only five of us uh, because we are the pioneer uh, class of marine engineering uh, deg uh, degree program in Kenya. Uh, the rest have also arrived. I'll just ask them to wave to acknowledge their presence. Yeah, one of them is still on his way. So. Um, Marcy was our sister, and uh, for the last 10 years or so, we were a close un a close knit family of sorts. Because from first year till fifth year, we were always together. Even uh, she was likable, she was, um, she got along with everybody, even including. Um, the mechanical engineering guys who are also present. And uh, I remember even when we went to we went to Korea, we remained uh, un united um, till when we finished the onboard the seaboard training. Even on coming back, should also should always call and check up on all her close friends, us marine guys, as I call it, marine guys included. And um, she cared for everyone. That's and that's what I can say. We managed to, I managed to um, work with her in uh, Bandari College briefly. And uh, until the time she left Mombasa, and she relocated to Nairobi. Um, every time she used to come visit Mombasa, she would always call her friends. She would always call Zebida, um, myself, Shaban. She would always check up on all the people that were close to her. So this is um, it's a it's a loss for us, the, 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 her classmates, and even the mechanical engineering guys. 
and uh, we just pray for God's peace to be upon all of us and to the family once again Poleni Sana uh, we share in your grief and we just pray that that uh, her soul God rests her soul in eternal peace till the day that we'll, we'll uh, meet again so with those few remarks uh, thank you thank you everyone and may God's peace be upon you all Santeni San. Thank you. Thank you, thank you, Paul. So kindly, the friends on sit Zabida or and they say Karibuni Sana Tapadari. Um, praise God. Um, my name is Daisy Marindan. Um, I went uh, to primary school with Mercy, and we also went to high school together. And um, in high school, we were very close. We slept in the same cube for the entire duration of our high school, and we remained friends after that. Um, I mean, I, there's no words to describe um, the loss that we feel by Mercy's demise. Um, she was. She was just everything. Um, Mercy became everything she had spoken about. Um, she knew what she wanted to achieve in life, and she was a go-getter. She completely went for that, and nothing could stop her. What's even more valuable about Mercy is all the friendships she developed right from her childhood to adulthood. She kept them going, and she really valued her friends. I remember um, in high school, at some point when I was having a bit of a challenge with my academics, she always wrote me little notes to encourage me. And she knew me very well. So one time she wrote me and said, Daisy, don't lose who you are. That, that was Mercy. She was the kind of friend to pick you up, even when she was going through a hurdle herself. Uh, but Mama Mercy and Mama Mercy, you raised a very incredible daughter. Her life we shared. And for that, we're really grateful for the life you gave us through Mercy. We promise to keep her legacy living because that's what she wanted. And um, we're very sorry for the loss for Dan, Dory, and Mark. Um, Mercy would have loved to be here. She'd have loved to see you achieve your dreams. So as you go on with life in her absence, though present in our hearts, I pray for God's peace over you guys. And I ask all of our friends who are here that we may continue standing with them. Because Mercy has left us, but she'd love us to continue being in her life in that way. Um, for Mercy, what I can just tell you is um, I'm, I'm proud of the lady you became. And I, I wish we had many more years to unfold life together. But uh, as life has decided to happen as it did, I pray that you may go well. And I hope to see you. Again, rest in peace, Masi. Praise God. Praise God. Amen. I'm Winnie, uh, best friend to Masi. I've known Masi since we were in class four, before even she joined Kirchner Primary. And uh, I, I don't have so many words, just that I loved her. And may she rest in peace. Amen. Thank you. Uh, at this point, I will also would like to invite the, the cousins, that is Chips and Valentine. And as they come on the stage, please, the, we will also have one workmeet from Man Kenya. Be also prepared. You'll take the podium after them. So, Chebs and Valentine, Karibuni. Then I'm a workmate right after, after them. Praise Jesus. Uh, my name is uh, 
Masi Chabet Kirui. And uh, Masi was my cousin and my sister. Uh, I just have this tribute for her. Dear sister, words cannot explain, cannot express the pain in our hearts. You've left us way too soon. We miss you dearly and love you dearly. MK, my sister, it is still unbelievable how you left us. I remember the last time I saw you, the laughter, the joy of your heart was very radiant and will forever linger in our minds. We laughed, played, ate, and cracked a lot of jokes. Then confident for almost all our cousins, a big heart that expanded to accommodate all of us. I remember the oldest joke that we always used to crack. And uh, we used to remember how myself and my twin brother were thoroughly beaten when Auntie first came home from, from delivering you at Litain. The pain, the many plans we still had to visit various places with your nephew and nieces who you love dearly. You're beautiful inside and out, and we had a chance to love you. Our family has been torn apart by you. Okay, can we have then the, the workmate from Man Kenya? Kindly take this thing. Auntie June, you read you know, the tribute on behalf of the, all the aunties, and then I'll give us the, the next person. So, Karibu Sana. Morning, church. Uh, my name is James Wandai, and uh, I'm here on behalf of Man Energy Solutions, Kenya Limited. And uh, our partner, or our client, uh, Triumph Power Plant, who we work for, who is our client, as I'm in Kenya. So, Masi was our colleague until her last day, and uh, she was our shift engineer. And uh, we have lost really great uh, person and uh, staff. She was, uh, what we can say is, uh, she was uh, a leader because she was a uh, shift. Supervisor, she was leading a team. Masse was a manager. She could uh, manage the plant whenever she was uh, left uh, for that purpose. And also, much more, she was a, a teamwork, and uh, she supported the team that she was working with and a company as a whole. So as a, uh, on behalf of uh, MN uh, Man Energy Solutions. We, uh, we have really lost uh, a great uh, uh, leader. And uh, I will read uh, our tribute to Masi. Uh, Masi led uh, uh, her shift in such a way that uh, she expre uh, uh, exemplified uh, leadership. Uh, she gave energy, commitment, and inspiration to her shift and to others with whom she worked. The Masi we remember was a happy Masi, one who not only was cheerful in herself, but who gave much selfness to others. She had a beautiful smile, a sense of humor, and a gentle demeanor. Mercy was bright, logical, and systematic in her thinking. She was always willing to share her ideas and information. She was passionate, interested in engineering, understanding how things work and how optimize achieve results. She would advise, her, uh, advise us on how better to work together for the best results. Many of us are afford of her to be a, a spread it pers a person of great intellect and big heart. And um, as uh, in the eulogy, you can remember she, when she was she joined the, the company, she was just a technical uh, engineer, but 
within those five years she had worked with us, five or six years she had worked with us, uh, she rose through ranks. And this was because of her dedication, her passion, and knowledge of whatever she was doing, being a marine engineer, and, uh, and working in a power plant, not in a marine. She was of much, much help uh, to the company. And uh, all that we can say is Boris Anna to the family, to the friends, uh, my colleagues, and everyone who, who knows uh, Masi. And we can say, rest easy, Masi, till we meet again. Thank you. Thank you so much.